revealing the state's most dangerous roads, with most of them right here in Metro Detroit. We begin with the local forecasters tracking another line of showers headed our way. We've enjoyed summer like temperatures this week, but looking wet now for the weekend, of course. Yeah, Ben, let's uh, start with these overnight showers. Will it still be wet for the morning commute, you think? Uh, I think we'll probably still have some puddles out there, Kim and Devin, but I don't think that we'll be seeing falling rain, which will be good news for drivers who are going to be out there tomorrow morning. We need this rain, though, so it's uh, good that we're making a dent in that rainfall deficit. Let's take a look at Storm Tracker 4. It's light stuff out there, especially compared to what we went through earlier today, but we've got a lot more south of the state line. We've been watching a line across parts of central Ohio, and that's going to start moving into our neck of the woods here over the next few hours. So through the overnight, we'll probably see some showers and then it'll wrap up as we get closer to daybreak tomorrow morning. Here's the forecast map and you can see probably by 4 a.m. we'll see everything dry, uh, maybe just a few lingering showers beyond that, but generally dry for the first half of Friday, not so much for the second half. We've got more rain coming. The biggest push though is coming over the weekend, late Saturday into Sunday. A whole mess of rain, and as we said, we need it, but by that point, we may not. Uh, we'll tell you how much we're expecting for the weekend and what the rest of Friday looks like all in just a few minutes. Guys? Okay, Ben. Tonight, a Taylor woman who's lived in her home for nearly 10 years says she has just had enough of drag racing, motorcycles, and loud parties in her neighborhood. The problem isn't coming from outside the neighborhood. It's the person who lives just a few doors down. Victor Williams spoke to both sides, and Victor, this feud appears to be escalating. Yes, escalating indeed, and we had the chance to speak to the police chief here in Taylor. He tells me that this is all being investigated, but while that investigation continues, one woman is saying that she's had it up to here with her neighbor, bringing the neighborhood down, while that neighbor is saying it's no big deal. That's not something that should be happening in a neighborhood like this. Tara Elizabeth has been downright frustrated living in her Karen Street home ever since her neighbors moved in the house two doors down. This racing and speeding through is dangerous. You can still see the fresh tire marks from a burnout, but Tara isn't the only one on the block complaining. Tim McFarlane hasn't been able to sleep either. Pretty much every night they'll have like lines of cars up here having parties. It'll be like 3 a.m. They'll be out here yelling and screaming and blasting music so loud. Yet when we caught up with 25 year old Haley Nielsen, she insisted she wasn't doing anything wrong and has tried to apologize multiple times for the disruptions. Oh, I play loud music and I do bonfires and my friends ride dirt bikes and four wheelers. Is that wrong? Ain't kids supposed to play outside? The get togethers are so wild that Tara's security camera caught this drunk person stumbling all over her lawn. Yet when Tara confronted Haley about all the ruckus, she said she was called a racial slur by one of her friends. His response was, yeah, N-word. Haley, however, says it was in response to a racial slur towards her. Yeah, she wants to throw him, we'll throw him back. We don't care. We're not racist. Police Chief Blair says the department is aware of the situation and is investigating what can be done. But Tara is saying that's not good enough. It feels helpless. They're not listening. I pay a thousand dollars a month by myself. Right. I pay my bills. I bought my <laughs> truck. So what? Whew. So something is going to have to give here. We're told that because a month by myself. All I right. pay my bills. I bought my <laughs> truck. So what? Whew. So something is going to have to give here. We're told that because of this incident, Tara and her family are now exploring the options of selling their home. And Taylor Victor Williams, Local 4. Okay, Victor, we appreciate it. Let's turn now to the coronavirus. Michigan lawmakers are asking for more vaccine doses to combat the state's surging case numbers. Representatives Debbie Dingell and Fred Upton have sent a letter to the White House urging the Biden administration to immediately increase the allocation of vaccine doses to Michigan. Meanwhile, the state is sending vaccines to 26 colleges and universities to get students vaccinated before this school year ends. Today, the state reports 7,819 new cases and 73 more deaths. More than 3,500 people are hospitalized with COVID. Metro Detroit doctors are concerned hospitals could reach capacity if the current surge doesn't slow down. We are very worried about the accelerating pace of the new cases that we have seen in the state and the number of people being hospitalized with COVID. So we're afraid we may reach some critical capacities next week in our intensive care units. So I do think we have another couple of weeks 
But if we could stop the new infections just by social distancing, I, I think we can at least stop it from getting worse. The state says it is not considering any new restrictions. Governor Gretchen Whitmer is instead urging everyone to get the vaccine. April is Distracted Driving Awareness Month. And with that in mind, a new list identifies the most deadly stretches of road in Michigan. As you might expect, many on the list are here in Metro Detroit. Jason Colthorpe here to break down the trouble spots. Jason. I'm standing in front of Telegraph Road, which is on this list. And if you disagree with some of the stretches of roads you're about to see, that's OK, because police say it's not necessarily the roads that make them deadly. Using data from fatal accidents from 2017 to 2019, online financial advisor Money Geek listed the 10 deadliest five mile stretches of road in Michigan and six are in Metro Detroit. The deadliest is Detroit's Gratiot Avenue between East Grand Boulevard and Seven Mile with 11 fatal crashes. Every other entry on this list totals eight fatalities, including I-75 in Detroit between I-96 and I-94. It's fourth overall with most of the deadly crashes coming near the I-94 interchange. Number six is the stretch of Telegraph between Grand River and Joy Road in Wayne County. Seven Mile comes in at number seven between Telegraph and the Lodge. Ninth is the stretch of I-94 by Detroit Metro Airport. And last is in Detroit, East Davison between Conant and 96. I think a fatal crash can happen anywhere. Lieutenant Mike Shaw of the state police isn't convinced it's these stretches of roads that make things dangerous. So it's not just all of a sudden I got to be careful on, you know, 94 near the airport. Well, there may be a lot more crashes there because there's a lot more traffic. Traffic is one factor, but there are many more at play in a deadly crash. Speed, distractions, drugs and alcohol, and weather, just to name a few. I'd rather have people not think of the road as deadly, but our driving behaviors. Lieutenant Shaw kept going back to the number one reason for so many accidents, above all, it's driver error. And with that in mind, he says never to forget you are in control, so make smart decisions. On Telegraph Road, Jason Colthorpe, Local 4. All right, Jason, by the way, the other four roads on the list, two in Grand Rapids, including a stretch of US 131, uh, Dort Highway up in Flint, and US 10 in Ludington. The former CEO of a local charity is accused of embezzling more than $200,000 meant for children. 56-year-old John Lynch of Gross Point Park used to run the Holy Cross Organization, a religious nonprofit that serves the homeless as well as houses foster children. During 2014 and 2017, Lynch is accused of using money from the nonprofit for a wide variety of personal expenses, including vacations and improvements to his own home. He's now charged with wire and mail fraud. He faces up to 20 years in prison if convicted. An Oak Park man has to pay his ex-girlfriend half a million dollars for posting nude photos and videos of her online in an act of what's known as revenge porn. The 35-year-old victim filed the suit against the Oak Park man last December, saying he created a profile in her name on a porn site, posting pictures she sent him while they were dating. A judge not only awarded the woman $500,000, but also ordered the 39-year-old man to remove all images of the woman from the site and destroy all copies that he owns. If he doesn't obey, he could face jail time for contempt of court. The global chip shortage causing new issues for both General Motors and Ford. Ford now plans to idle its Flat Rock assembly plant for a week beginning Monday due to the shortage. Impacted vehicles include the Explorer, Mustang and Lincoln Aviator SUVs. Meanwhile, GM's Lansing Grand River assembly will extend its downtime through the week of April 26th. One estimate is that the semiconductor shortage could result in 1.28 million fewer vehicles being built this year. Still ahead, a Michigan neighborhood is targeted by three vandals. Tens of thousands of dollars in damages. Why police were shocked when they found out who was responsible. And a Michigan man arrested outside an Ohio nuclear power plant, what he claimed to have when he was confronted by security. But first, a Texas state trooper shot during a manhunt for a mass shooting suspect. What we're learning about the gunman when we come right back.